I'm still here, but all I see is fuzzy, blurry, white. There we go. There's a picture. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're back. What did We're you back. do? I dropped my camera under the desk, and I had to get a hook and grab it. Okay. Anyway. Okay. We were evaluating lime leaves. Correct? Yes. Okay. So you were saying about the trans 2 decinal, trans 4 decinal? Probably has something like that in there. Absolutely. To make this uh, make a, go so nuclear. Yes, it's a, I would say it's like a fattiness, uh, aldehydic fattiness for sure. And it's very sharp. It might even have a sulfur compound. What do you think? Maybe? No? It might. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to move on to humus or hummus ether. I don't know how it's said. Uh, I got this one because a lot of people like geosmin, and this is kind of similar to that, I think, but I'd love to know what you think. It, um, it's so strong that I think your nose just shuts off. Well, before that happens, do you have any impression of it, or? Make it. Impression of what? Of what it smells like. It's methyl benzoate. It's I'm sorry, methyl fenchol. It's methyl fenchol. So, okay, well, I was talking about the geosmin to start with. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, 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 pardon me. Okay, go ahead. Finish uh, it. Uh, geosmin, you... It smells the same. It doesn't get any stronger. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think your nose shuts off. Um, this, I think you can smell better in in strength and dilution. And to me, this smells more uh, wet earth than jasmine smells like uh, earth in a rain. <clears throat> okay. And uh, I think it's a different aspect. I think it's useful. I think it's uh, maybe... I was going to say rounder, but I'm not sure. They're both single molecules, so I'm not sure that can happen. But it smells, it smells nice and um, you know pleasant to me. Yeah, yeah, I like it too. I it's like a morning dew kind of a for me. It's a soil, wet soil, um, very diffusive, um, and you know methyl fenchol. I don't know. I've never used. I know people use ethyl fenchol on its own, but but this is one that Takasago made with methyl, or this is methyl fenchol, basically, 50% dilution in uh, DPG. So that is hummus or humus ether, um, and a nice morning dew note. Okay, oh, yeah. so we're going to move on to um, Pam Zest. This is a cinerome base, Nactis cinerome base. Um, this is one of my favorites in the store, uh, and I have several things in the store for grapefruit, grapefruit uh, fragrances and, and fragrances that use grapefruit, but for me, personally, I'm not a perfumer, but um, this is probably the best grapefruit note I think I offer synthetic-wise, um, if you're not using grapefruit oil, you know, but that's my opinion, and I would like to know what you think, Paul. I think this is sweeter than uh, than red grapefruit, uh, pink grapefruit, I guess. Um, I like it a lot. I think it's a nice base. I think it's fruity and beautiful grapefruit. It certainly doesn't have the uh, so much of the sulfur that you would get in real grapefruit. Mm, mm -hmm. um, it's it's you know, fresher, fruitier than than real grapefruit. And of course, you're not using the real grapefruit. It, uh, right. I think it, I think it moves much. I think it's much less the yellow and more the pink. Oh, okay, yep. And and um, 
more more fruity and bright fruit not bright sulfur but bright fruit and it's very nice it it beats my pink grapefruit face that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> i think well are you saying it's pink because of because it's sweeter is pink grapefruit sweeter yeah it's sweeter okay okay I haven't worked on my pink grapefruit base in quite a long time, but this okay. is, uh, I think this is better than my pink grapefruit base. Cool. It's very nice. Uh, we have, like, our, our screens are a little laggy here, but that's okay. Yeah, that's what happened when you... Yeah, I pulled out the other monitor. Yeah, so I have both monitors on one. That's okay. We can still see you. I'm trying to make you look a little better, but... <laughs> Let me see if I can I see. Are those comments underneath? No, that's something else. No, but there are four people watching, and I think two of them are, are us, but it's okay. The stream is a little more stable right now. Um, so that's Pam Zest. And we are going to move on to Hivernal Neo, which is a Ferminic base. Or is it a base? I thought it was a molecule. Hibernal Neo. Um, oh, that's well. Let me see if I if I have information on that. I always thought it was. All right, this might. I think it. I think it's a molecule because I. Oh, you're thought, right. I, you're right. Um, I found out about two bases from Ferminish, and they sent them out to me for samples. They're called Beyond. Hibernal or Hibernal and Beyond Lily Floor. Okay. So I looked up the uh, I looked up the SDS on these mm -hmm. and uh, to find out how much was in them. Okay. And so yes, Hibernal Hibernal is listed as a single molecule on the basis. You are here. definitely correct there. I'm sorry, I uh, I was mistaken. Um, yes, it is a wonderful muguet. Um, I didn't know about it until you told me. Well, it's new. It's very new. And so, you know, this is, what I wanted to talk about this is, uh, you know, I bought Lily Floor, I bought a whole kilo of it so I would have it and use it freely and not be afraid to use it. And, you know, both of these, <clears throat> both of these are about replacing Lilial and Liral. Ah. Um, Were those... And so, I, I like I like Liral a lot. I want to use Liral. Mm, yep. Mm -hmm. um, and and so I've been, I was looking this week about replacements for Liral and trying to come up with something and uh, I think probably the best ones that are out there are still captives. I wrote to Jividon and looking for Mahonial and Mahonial is still restricted, I mean a captive. Okay. So I don't think I can get Hiver uh, Mahonial probably for a while. So that means I have to try and look for a way to either replace it, clear out, or just pick the other materials and use them use them with, without reference to Liral. I mean, that's the best way to look at it is not use it as a reference to Liral right. and just just use them for what they are and not for what they're not. <clears throat> I see. That's what I like to do with materials is use them for what they are and not try and use them for what they're not. Well, but well, in, in this... Go ahead. No, I was going to ask you why, what is so outstanding about Liral that can't be replaced? Like, what's the... No Great. All right, so this week I made Chanel number 19 from a formula that I bought. Uh, used as real, real jasmine, real neroli, three kinds of real rose, wow. uh, and 10% Lyra. Okay. And so I made my 10 grams and then split that in half and then put in the five, uh, you know, I put in the 10% Lyra and I put in 10% uh, Lyra substitution, which was. Uh, forty percent Hibernal Neo, 
forty percent forget the other one and forty percent about twenty percent something else anyway. citronella no oh it was uh you're right it was forty per forty hibernal forty hydroxy citronella diethyl acetal and twenty uh floor uh, an ozonic floral something I forgot anyway so I I mix them up and I'll, I'll smell the substitution first and it's nice yeah it's good quality but then when I smell the Lyral it is even better oh I see and, and you don't know why. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's not that I really worked hard on trying to make a Lira replacement base. You know, I right. just put them in there in an idea of what I thought it might work. And um, it doesn't doesn't work particularly. And so, um, you know, in this case, I'm trying to substitute Lira. I'm not trying to use them for what they are, the okay. others for what they are. Okay. And, uh, you know, I guess it's going to take a while before we can find a good substitute for Lyral if, uh, on the common market and not a captive. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, I have several that are in this category, like Lorinal from Hatagasago, L. Lorinal, which yeah. is, yeah, similar. And then... Um, That's label hydroxy citronella. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess there's really no substitute for Lyral for whatever reason, you know. At least not right now that we can buy. Right. Uh, so that's where we are. Okay. Well, <clears throat> thank you for that. Um, we're going to move on to uh, um, a product I added at the request of uh, Bill Roberts. Um, Edenolide uh, wasn't being offered anywhere in the States anyway. Um, I know other, I think Chris Bartlett offers it at Pellwall, but... Um, uh, I had not heard of this. Is this a new one? Do you happen to know, or is it just recently uncaptivated? I, I, I think it's uncaptivated. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then released into the wild. Released into the wild. Um, but as I mentioned to you before the broadcast, I can't really smell any of the uh, ides, any of the uh, musk, uh, or these this class of compound. Um, All right. So I you have to give me a second. I have to put this. You know, yes. it's ether aside because yes. that's all I can smell. Okay, right now. okay, okay. Understood. We probably should have started with this one. Well, while Paul's doing that, I want to welcome you guys to the live stream. We finally got it going here. Um, we are going. We have all, we have already evaluated lime leaves, humus, hummus ether, Pam zest, hivernal or hivernal, and we are now on edenolide, which is an IFF. Yes. Um, yeah. Product. So, go ahead, Paul, because I can't smell this. So yeah, it's very faint. Um, when I first opened the bottle, when you sent it to me last week, you know, I smelled it and I thought, oh, that's very pleasant, green, nice, little fresh, and um, and that was the first time I opened the bottle, and then I. I, uh, you know, open it again a few days later and I can smell anything. So I think the, uh, I think what's happening is the headspace in the bottle mm -hmm. is, is capturing, um, the aspects that I can't smell when I smell it freshly dipped or things like that. Okay. Uh, it's a little evaporated and into the headspace and I can, I can smell it then, but, uh, it is very difficult to smell, uh, from a strip. Yes. Uh, well, I, what I pulled up here on the screen, uh, I temporarily hid you, um, just to show that Arcady Boy Camps Comps um, has a very long post regarding edenolide. Uh, so, if anyone's interested in his thoughts, uh, if you go to Facebook to Arcady's page, um, there's a whole post here on Edenolide, um, which might be helpful. So, just pointing it out. And there's Paul again. Um, what I will say is that <clears throat> uh, I 
it blends it's a very good blender with other musk compounds uh, according to our Katie and uh, and and all he also says it blends very well with green notes uh, and it's worth working with. I think it makes a difference, and I think it's probably more noticeable when you complete your fragrance and add some of this, you know, instead of evaluating it on its own. I think that's where yeah. the value comes in. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big molecule of musk, and it's not going to show up in top notes uh, right. very well. Um, so okay. uh, I put it... I, I, put it into something this week forgot what it was uh, but I am working on two or three green fragrances okay uh, so I'm gonna be using it in those and uh, we'll see how it works great that would be good feedback okay so that was Edenolide um, we are going to move on to ethyl 24 decadienoate also known as pear ester. Oh, okay. Do you, do you have that one? Um, I don't. I don't need it because oh. it's one of my favorite things. Oh, good. good. I, I have it. It's not here, but it. Okay. Uh, you can talk about. Yeah, uh, I love it. Great. Um, I love it too. But as a flavorist, I used it a heck of a lot. It's so expensive. How could you use it as a flavorist? A lot. That's a well, lot. Well, because you don't need you don't need that much. Oh, yeah, yeah. you're right. Okay, yeah. Fair I mean, enough. you're diluting it to maybe even 05 percent, and then down from there. So I do have to I do have to say um, it has a short shelf life. Yes. It. Uh, I bought some, and um, I bought a big amount, and then it it. Oh. Uh, got thick as syrup and it smelled bad yes yeah so, I think it uh, polymerizes or something yeah, it polymerizes yes and so uh, yeah. what happened oh boy Skype just crashed sorry guys give me a minute Skype just crashed and Paul is gone. Stand by. We are going to try and get Paul back. Somehow we dropped off. Yep. The Skype just went the put, but I got you back. And let me get you out of there. <laughs> ah, the technical stuff. All right. Hold on a minute. I want us both. Here we go. Nope. That's not right. Are we both on the screen? I see you and... A tiny me. <laughs> uh, I want a, I want a big you, and I don't want that stuff. My background. Wait a minute. Okay. Can you just mix maximize me and and cover your second version of you? Let's see if that works. What happened there? You maximized me, and I'm big now. <laughs> you can certainly be bigger than me. Here, let me, let me... Well, I'm not that big. I'm about the same size, or was. All right, okay. All right, I'll, I'll get this straightened out. Hold on. Now I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, no, hold on. <clears throat> you are <clears throat> going to be big in a second. There you go. Let's just use my voice and your face.
get ready, here it comes. So ethyl 2 for decadienoate, can you say more about it? I mean, how have you used it? I know it didn't last very long. It's supposed to be refrigerated, so that'll help a lot. Well, I certainly used it in my pear base that's coming to you soon. Oh, great. Um, that's mostly where I put it. I've been looking, I've been trying to buy that for several years because I love pear and I wanted to make pear mm -hmm. and uh, it's a beautiful molecule and I'm so glad we could buy it. Um, Good. That's mostly where I've been using it so far is pear base, but I certainly see that it could be, you know, singly used in a pear direction for uh, for top notes and things and it's very nice. It's for other products, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty versatile actually, uh, as you as you diluted it, it, it in very in a lot of fruity compounds, compositions. So um, but you're right, it's not very stable. But do you keep it in the fridge or did you? I did. Oh you did. Okay. I did. I kept I had a little bottle on the bench and then I kept the rest in the in the fridge and they both went bad. Wow, okay. Harry yeah. Sherwood just came on. I, oh. see, I finally see the questions here. Okay, let's see. Rich says, is it possible that adenolide is one of those materials that takes an hour or so before they bloom? Yes, possibly. Oh, oh I'm glad you can see that. Um, and Giovanni says, what are the most important differences compared to Apolide? Especially as an effect in the fragrance, it is said they are very similar. I have not tried it in a while. Um, I think Apolide is has much more of a top headspace that's top notey and middle notey. I don't ex I don't uh, smell the I don't smell that with Edenolide. I think, like I mentioned, I was smelling the top of the bottle and I could smell green and fresh but uh, certainly not like Apolide or Helvetolide that I smell right away. Um, it's, uh, and I can smell from a strip. So uh, Apolide and Helvetolide both are you know, much more top and middle, and I think Adenolide is probably lower, lower middle and bottom. Bottom, <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's a good that's a good answer though. I agree. I, I smelled Apolide and I could smell it, which tells you something because I can't smell the bottomy notes. I can smell the toppy notes. Um, so yeah, uh, does that answer your question, Giovanni? <laughs> I hope so. Um, we're gonna keep an eye on the chat. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, okay, so we are gonna move on, and I think before we start on the PK perfumes basis. If Paul wants to give a sort of an overview as to why uh, we didn't, did we do uh, the Verte Citron? Is that what? On it's our not list? on my list. Oh, if, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to to. I have I have five of your bases that I have in the store available here: pineapple, mango, vanilla, and lemon. Uh, right. And, and fixative. So that right. one, yeah. So, so I don't know if you want to. Maybe we'll talk about each of them as we go. Maybe that's better. But, um, okay. but we're going to start with perfect pineapple because it's perfect. It is. It is. I. You can't. I. I mean, there's such great reviews of this product, and the sales have been very good for this. Um. So please tell us, what? Where did you come up with this one? Why? Oh. Oh, you know, so people are so crazy about pineapple now with Aventus and everything, and and it is a lovely note. Um, and and uh, you know, I came up with this. I wanted to use a pineapple base. I thought people would like to buy a pineapple base. Uh, so I I did two things. I studied a GC that I had of Aventus to look at the pineapple-y stuff. And uh, I also had a piece of fresh pineapple that uh, I put in a little dish and kept it on the bench there as it, as it uh, you know, dried. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I tried to keep fine-tuning my accord, my base, to match the fresh piece that was drying in on the bench. Okay. And uh, 
the sweetness balance was difficult to pull off and I finally figured out how to do that and um, the, uh, the, the bright sulfury top notes that's difficult to pull off I had to buy some special molecules for that and uh, it turned out so nice yeah it's it's so juicy and um, well uh, were you a fan of pineapple before I mean is it the you know were, did you use pineapple before this Aventus craze I guess it's not a new craze but no not really okay you know it was just one of those things that you know I could have became aware of as a right. as, as a product of the Aventus uh, part and and I think my skills have grown quite a bit in the past couple of years and I was able to uh, you know pull it off and make yeah it. no this one is a, is a winner definitely and um, and I like as I said it's very popular in the store um, and uh, if I were a perfumer I would try it especially if you're into the men's cologne the men's fragrance uh, Aventus area um, perfect pineapple is perfect okay and so we're gonna move on to now you you choose I have magnificent mango vanilla um, lemon or fixative which we'll do last I think but all right so uh, mango next okay. since we're in tropical fruits okay um, uh, so I I had a mango base formula that uh, I started from uh, I wasn't so impressed with it uh, I thought it, thought it needed oomph and um, so I, I took that base and I, I uh, reworked it and, and made it stronger and mm -hmm. gave it the sulfur it needed it didn't have any sulfur before and um, it's quite it's quite based on a bunch of lactones and so if oh. you use if you use it you need to uh, account that uh, the dry down will be rather lactonic okay well while, while the top is uh, the fresh fruity sulfury oh yeah but but um, that doesn't that's not necessarily a uh, a a liability it's uh, it's just a part of what this is yeah you uh, definitely nailed the um, sulfury top notes um, this is mango by the way for those of you who have just joined magnificent mango base by PK perfumes and um, I mean what I don't know if you're out there and you eat mangoes I definitely recommend this as a true to fruit uh, um, base so uh, definitely nailed the, the the essence of the mango I, I I'm very impressed Paul oh, thanks <laughs> um, I, I, I under I get the lactone finish um, actually I'm gonna let it sit here for a sec on my little tree so my little um, so yeah so uh, that's magnificent mango base uh, again available in the store perfumer supply house and we are going to move on to vanilla right or lemon which one Either one vanilla okay vanilla yeah. absolute replacer uh, this is a fairly new one on on our website um, I don't think many people know about it so we are making it known Paul let us tell us about this one please so some of you may know I hate vanilla <laughs> but but really what I hate is uh, the ubiquitous use of uh, ethyl vanillin and vanillin in, in high dosages in candles and, and things that just pervade society and cheap perfume and that's what I hate okay um, the vanilla the real vanilla absolute is quite diverse complicated rich full uh, has a lot of phenolics in it uh, has spices, has fruitiness in it, and uh, it's quite a different beast. And then, uh, and I use um, I use vanilla absolute in rhinoceros, oh. um, and uh, it's 
so expensive now. Oh my gosh, so mm -hmm. expensive. Uh, it's hard to use in dosages that uh, you want to use it, maybe, privately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I went out and I looked for everybody's vanilla absolute replacer because it's so expensive. I got, I got it from five different suppliers, you know, from low end to high end, and I hated all of them. Wow. They, they primarily relate, uh, was used um, uh, the resinoid, which doesn't smell uh, like ben it's, they use benzoin resinoid. It used uh, some other stuff, and it doesn't smell like vanilla absolute. Right. Nothing that I bought smelled like what I needed and wanted. So I said, I'll make it myself. Um, <laughs> I found I found one supplier that had a tincture of vanilla absolute beans. And that was the closest. Okay. So I started with that. And then I, I spiked it with everything else that was not smellable, that was basically missing from the tincture. Shouldn't have been missing from the tincture, but it wasn't there. And... Uh, I got some special molecules from Sigma, from you, Christine, I think, and um, they're all in tiny little amounts, but it really made it come close. And I've got my bottle of Vanilla Absolute 25% dilution, and my bottle of my Vanilla Absolute PK, and uh, this is a little stronger than the 25% dilution, but okay. it, it's very close. It's very. It's probably about twice as strong. So the the PK is probably about fifty percent dilution. Okay. It's not the exact perfect match, but it is so close. It, it is very have, close. Yeah. You would have trouble telling them apart. Well, I I do offer the natural vanilla absolute organic from Biolons, and uh, and it does smell very similar to that one, but that one is about a hundred times more expensive. So. Um, so this is a great substitute if you're not uh, restricted by natural, a natural fragrance claim. Yeah. Um, yes, it's very nice, and I want more people to know about it. I, um, I believe what we can do is uh, maybe I know I know it's still a little cost prohibitive, but uh, but we can maybe take some, put it on the Black Friday sale uh, for some off. So maybe we can get it in more hands um, because, because <laughs> even it is not cheap to make right exactly yeah I'm sure there are things in it that you can't avoid using but like I said it has you know it has spice molecules fruit molecules mm -hmm. um, phenolic molecules other vanillic molecules that are hard to come by and uh, it's a really nice uh, it's a nice version yeah, it's really great, and uh, and it's true. It's true, it, as opposed to ethyl vanillin and vanillin. So, um, it's true to vanilla. Vanilla bean. Somebody said that, I think it was Jerowin, Jerowin Sparla said that he tried it and it was everything he wanted. It, he was amazed, and he asked me if I put uh, a large dosage of something in it. Uh, I I think it might have been isobutaben. Okay. And he said that, that was one of the things he didn't like amongst all the other replacers okay. that he'd been buying. And I said, I looked at the formula and I said, no, I didn't put any of that in it, whatever it was. Right, right, yeah. And so um, it, so. it apparently is a different take on what even what he'd tried, too. Okay, yeah. No, it's I've not smelled anything like it myself, so... Uh, so anyway, it's available on the website. Um, I, I, I'm not even. I'm not sure if I may even make a two grams uh, a version uh, available. So if you wanted to just try it, I can't sample it. But uh, but uh, that's vanilla, vanilla absolute replacer. We are going to move on to a long lasting lemon, long lasting lemon base. From PK Perfumes. So this does have uh, what it was, fourteen percent real lemon oil in it. Okay. If we look at the SDS, which I I sent you, I think. Okay. Um, 
So it does have real lemon in it, so it, it does have that aspect that you might have to worry about the dosage, but um, truthfully, this is so strong, you're not going to be using it except in tiny doses anyway. And I guess uh, contrary to lemon oil, this is, I mean, and you wrote it in the name, I mean, it, it's something in it which you you put in it makes it last longer than a typical citrus or a typical lemon, right? I mean, is it? Yeah, uh, I put in five of my uh, own captive-made molecules oh. in. Wow. And one of those five molecules uh, lasts five weeks on the smelling strip. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, five weeks. Five five stinking weeks that it you. <laughs> You can smell it on the strip. <laughs> um, another one of the molecules I make uh, lasts for three weeks okay. on the strip. And so it's it's chock full of things that I make that are going to make it last long, and that's why it's long-lasting lemon. Wow. Yep. Uh, also has some... Um, oh, what is it? Uh... LME Absolute, I think. LME Absolute or, yeah, okay. Either LME Absolute or LME Resonoid, one of the two. Okay. And um, that really helps it last in the in the middle range really well, too. And, uh, well, I'd be interested. I, I've actually sold, like, um, like the uh, pineapple, I've sold quite a bit. Quite a bit, I shouldn't say quite a bit, but you know, a lot of this, uh, relatively speaking. Um, but I, I think it's uh, if you're in the citrus, if you're into the citrus uh, composition uh, compositions, then this one is a definite, a definite. I mean, it could be used in grapefruit. It could be used in because it's got the top note and the base note of citrus. It's yeah, it's top to bottom. Pretty amazing. And you know, those those captives that I make, I had to make up I had to make up a whole new category of evaporation curve uh, that I call last notes. Oh. Because because how, how many things last five weeks on a strip? Uh, there's not too many. No. And uh, so the the molecules that I'm making are are lasting so long and they're so bright, it's not like they're dead at three weeks. You can still smell them nicely. Wow. And, and um, when so you, I, when you I call, go ahead. I was going to say, when you say you're making them, are they, are they accords? Is that what you mean by you're making, they're, they're, they're uh, captive, Kyler captives or? They're Kyler captive single molecules. Single molecules, wow, okay. So this is the accord. This is the base. E e okay. Okay. I didn't know if. Uh, so you're you're doing some sort of chemistry there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Wow. That's great. Okay, and that so that was long lasting lemon base, and finally what we have today is the fixative base, which I just recently added again. I would say in the last six months or three months even. Um, and I just wondered if you could tell us a little bit about how this one came to be, Paul. So, you know, people come on to um, base notes and say, what do I use to make my fragrance oil last long? <laughs> and we get so tired of answering that dang question. Um, so I decided to make something that might be useful for those people that need something like that. Because uh, I always say, if you make your formula right, then uh, you know you shouldn't need a fixative. But right. clear, clearly, there are people who uh, don't necessarily know how to make the formula better, or they have something existing and they need to augment it. So I decided to make something. But you know, I looked at the fixative base that I could find out from Perfumer's Apprentice, and I didn't like how it was such a high dosage of. Uh, forget which one, benzyl something, maybe benzyl benzoate. Because I didn't really like it, and my friend Mike Storer, the perfumer that I, fr I have friends with, he doesn't like it either. So I worked on 
trying to make a fixative base that uh, didn't use that in such a high amount and uh, use some other large molecules that I've been uh, working on finding and so still trying to make it as odorless as possible yeah uh, it does have a slight odor it does and it, it, if I can smell it it's uh, you know because I don't like I said I normally can't smell these types of things but it's got a very powdery I got a powderiness to it I think there might be a little, a touch of heliotropine in it okay. as a to do. Okay. Okay. I think you know that heliotropin is a very big molecule. Um, so it wasn't meant to be perfectly odorless, but it was meant to be, uh, you know, pleasant. Mm -hmm. When you can smell it, it's pleasant, and uh, with big molecules that um, are gonna, you know, hold stuff down. So it does extend the fragrance a bit, right? Yeah, if, if you if you need it, then it might be a solution. Okay, okay. Well, I said I have sold some of it, um, so we'll keep talking it talking it up, as we will for the other uh, PK perfume bases because they're very useful, very uh, wonderful, and some of them are perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I just finished off the black tea base to come to you. Okay. So okay. that's coming. Uh, I'm waiting on a couple of things from a supplier for the quince base. Okay. I'm writing the tear down. base should be coming soon. Black tea. Uh, uh, I have plumeria on the docket to come for you. Mm -hmm. And there was one more that I'm not remembering. Plumeria. What, what, what else is that? What is another name for that? Frangipani. Oh, Frangipani. Right, right, right. <clears throat> and cool. so that, that, the Plumeria is the first of the floral bases that I'm planning to get to you. Well, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, definitely. And, um... Well, that's great, Paul. Uh, I, if you don't mind, we didn't add it to the list today, but I just added Fumensens. Fumensens. Oh, yeah. Uh, that maybe we should talk a little about. Uh, we probably should have evaluated it today, uh, but if you wouldn't mind telling us about that one. Cause you... Well, I, I can evaluate it from memory because I've been using it in the, in the incense perfume I've been working on. Okay. Um, I've been trying to buy that for five years. And uh, finally, we got the money together, and Christine and I split that together. Mm -hmm. And it is, to me, it is the note of burning frankincense. Burning frankincense. So, frankincense HEC from Payan Bertrand is a high temperature frankincense extraction. So it's. It, in, a, in a similar way that birch tar and kate is burnt when it's distilled, they are burning the frankincense, but slightly. It's, it's a high temperature extraction. It's not a burnt extraction like kate or birch tar. And, and so it indeed has that smoky frankincense bit to it because that's what it is. Right. And, it, it, it's, a, it's a magical mixture of uh, how to get the extraction that is wonderful, amazing. Um, I put it in front of the nose of uh, another perfumer that visits here regularly, and he's been working on his own incense fragrance, and he smelled it, and I said, he said, oh, I've been working on an incense fragrance. I'm ready to release it. What do I do? Do I reformulate? <laughs> because he finally found the answer to what he right, was trying to Right, right, right. Have, uh, have you tried uh, hydrocarbo resin by, uh, you know, Biolans, that one? Oh, yeah. Okay, yes. so, so this is kind of similar to that, although this one is, I guess, I don't know. I, I don't know what the difference is. They're in the same family. So um, the hydrocarbo resin is from Labdanum. La right. Not from frankincense. Oh, that's the difference. Okay, so the the source the source is the difference, but they're right. very similar. I think in you're right. Yep, that is that is a huge difference actually. Okay. And yes, of course I know it because I told you to buy it. Oh, you did? Oh, you're the one. 
Oh. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, dope. Okay, so yes, we have Fumen Sens now available. I have half a kilo. Um, or less, a little bit less now. But, um, so I wanted to point that one out. And I also wanted to mention, um, I'm, uh, on another note, that I'm selling the samples of Palette Naturals by Miriam Vareldzis. I'm sorry if I said the last name wrong. Um, but Palette Naturals, you can find at palettenaturals.com. And I'm only making the five uh, gram version available so you can try them out. Um, they are all natural uh, bases that I think if you go to my homepage, you probably should see a list, but you can certainly search for those on my website. There are a nice selection. There's probably about 14 or 15 of them. Um, and if you're a natural perfumer, these are um, these are just spectacular uh, natural bases, all natural bases, and uh, Miriam adheres to many uh, regulations with regard to um, IFRA guidelines and et cetera, et cetera, allergens. She has a lot of documentation if you need that too. Um, I have still available some ambergris, ambergris or ambergris tinctures, 10% tinctures um, that I got from um, uh, Phoenix, Rising Phoenix, uh, and I'm still offering some of that. I make smaller sizes available now so that I know they were very expensive, so I've made two gram a two gram size available so if you wanted to play with that uh, and also um, I'm going to be adding uh, where is it hold on a lime Tahitian lime cold pressed I have I'm going to be adding that if you're into lime oil and I have a smidge of a coffee heavy roasted coffee a CO2 extract that's going to be added shortly. Uh, that's oil soluble. And I think that was, oh, and Sinensal. Sinensal. Beta Sinensal is a, uh, a fraction of orange oil that uh, is, I can't remember the percentage. It's a fraction. So I think it's only 25% Sinensal um, and other things that come from orange, which, again, if you're a natural perfumer, I've got a ton of things available for that. Uh, including this one. So I think that was all I wanted to say. Today. I wanted to say something about the Palette Naturals materials. Oh, please. Um, I've been tracking with Miriam for several years while she's been working on this, debuting this, and uh, they are very nice materials to work from. Um, She's been working with a fragrance house to get them blended up to uh, what she likes and, and specified and they are uh, they're very good materials. Mm -hmm. uh, no one should be afraid to use them. They're great. They are, absolutely. And again, you know, I make the five gram size available and then if you ever need more, she's got it. So uh, it's kind of a partnership there and as I do with Paul, you know, we all work together to bring stuff to available to, to niche and hobbyist perfumers that might not be available otherwise. So Giovanni says human scents plus hydrocarbon resin plus frankincense ex Basquelia <laughs> green sacra boom. Boom. He sounds like Emerald Lagasse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shazam. Okay. So anyway, that was all I wanted to say. Paul, do you have any final notes, final words no, of wisdom? I okay. Don't think so. All right. Well, I'm glad the stream finally worked. I think now I know the right configuration. I apologize for the beginning. Um, we are going to edit this video, and I will try to get it up on YouTube, but it will definitely be here on Facebook if you missed any portion of it, okay? Thank you all for watching, and we all both want to say bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.